deal. I'm Jaws on the beat, I got flow that kills. Do my thing with a few G's, Lauren Hill. What's up guys, it's Anders. Today I want to help you out when you're using vocal samples and give you some ideas, tips, tricks and methods you can use to get better results when you've only got those simple things to work with and ways of faking like things like layering, adding ad libs and lots of all the extra things you would do if you had a vocalist there to record and all the ideas and things you could create. Uh, I'm going to show you in Logic but a lot of the techniques you can apply to any DAW, you just need to know what you're doing in that one. And then when your track is all finished and ready for release, Today's channel sponsor can help you out with the next part. And a big thanks to the channel sponsor, DistroKid. DistroKid is a music distribution service and the best way to get your music out to all of the modern streaming services fast, efficiently, and within an independent artist's budget. Check out the description below for a discount today. So that's who I personally use to release all of my music and all the instrumentals for Warrior Sound Beats as well. So no further ado, let's jump into Logic and let me show you some of these techniques we can use to get better results using your vocal samples. But I can't vocal tape delay effect that I'm thinking that we're going to use in this section here. And as with everything in this, the ideas aren't always necessarily going to be final, but this is what I'm feeling is going to help fill it out. And it's a really cool technique to show you. So I'm going to take the middle vocal here because I think that's what's going to be most useful to us. So this part just here, what we want to do is have it play across this section, but we're going to take a little part of it just to keep it rolling through. But I can't see your view. Now we're not going to cut the sample up or anything like that. We're going to use some automation using one of Logic's plugins. So when we go into delay, there's one called tape delay. And this is really useful because we can control the feedback in great detail and we can push the feedback beyond 100%. That's really important here. We're going to really be making use of that. Now I think one over four is probably going to work about right for us. I'm going to try and capture this last phrase with it. You. Like that. So what we need to do is firstly, we're going to modulate the feedback. So what we need to do firstly, we need to make sure dry is back at 100%. Wet at 30% will probably be okay, but we can adjust it later if need be. Now we are going to modulate this feedback. So let's make sure we've got our automation lanes on. Where it says volume here, we're going to go to tape delay and feedback. Now over this last phrase just here, we're going to need to put some points in. So we can have this be off for the entire time. And then when it comes to here, we need to kind of feed it in a little bit. Let's just hear how long this lasts at 85%. Okay, so that's good. So at the end of about here, it's still going. What we need to do then is just start ramping up the percentage beyond 100. Now, this can very quickly get out of control. So work at a low level or even put a limiter on the channel because it can distort very quickly. Okay, so it's going to get out of control about here. And there we're going to start bringing that back down to sort of the 100 range. Now we can just have it maintained like that. Pretty much as long as we want. And we can bring it out around here. Now the trick is to make sure it's still nicely audible in the track. So it's actually a little bit loud. So what we can do now is bring the wet percentage down to something like 25 instead. Play it back and keep adjusting that balance. So this little pause here, I want to do something with this. I'm going to duplicate the one that's the mid vocal. So just Command D just to make a copy of that track here. 
And I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to stick it on the bottom because it's not part of my main vocals. I'm going to use it as an effect more than anything. And mix wise, we had the tape delay on it. I'm just going to disable it, but we might still use it, which is why I've left it there. Let's just turn automation off so we can zoom in. And let's have a quick listen to like what phrases we've got. That far is quite nice. And this looks like it could be useful. I'm going to hit T and I to get my scissor tool. I'm going to take this and I'm going to take this. Double tap T just to go back to the normal tool. Hold down Shift to select all the other parts. Backspace to get rid of them. And I'm going to use this part here to make a new effect for the minute. Uh, we'll put it onto a new channel. So in our effects here, we are going to go into reverb and we can use, we'll use chroma verb, which is fine. We're going to switch the room to a chamber. And I'm just going to get rid of these points here. I'm just going to flatten them off something like that. Uh, and I want a really long decay, like three or so seconds. Uh, it's huge on the size. I want pre-delay to be instantaneous and 100% wet. Then going to reverse this. Then uh, let's just play that back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that sound there just by highlighting it, make sure it's highlighted in yellow. I'm going to go into File, I'm going to go Bounce, Region in Place, and then in Region in Place, Show Me Vocals 2 only. We're just going to put Verb on there and just take that away and make sure we've got new track selected. Uh, we want to leave the source alone. I do want to definitely want to include the tail in this um, volume and panel automation. No, we don't want to normalize it either. And that right there is going to give me this. What I'm going to just test out is flipping that in reverse and expect to go into reverse. And I want to bring that up to here. And I just want to see how it works like as a transition. So let's try that. We'll just keep those muted for the minute. Can't get too far. Oh. Yeah, that works pretty well. Obviously, we need to take the levels down a bit and just minus six for the moment. So we need a little less adjustment and uh, we can get rid of that. We're not going to use that again now. And what we're going to do here is we're kind of going to fake a delay. So this phrase goes just like that. We're going to just snap it to there, put a tiny little fade on it. Okay, take it off of mute. I'm going to stick that here and I'm just going to use the gain and take it down. It's already gone down by three Going to take it down by six Put on the next one. Take it down by nine on the next one. Take it down by 12. Cool, and that gives us just something a little bit more interesting. And we've left that really long reverb on there as well. What we're going to do, we're going to duplicate this track and do the same again. I'm going to copy this down, do the T and I, and I think it was this phrase here. I can't get, can't get too far. I can't get. I'm just take that just there, get rid of these two, and just have that repeat here, but only on the sides. Yeah, I like the way that's laid up. Um, what we'll do is take them down as a couple, just by another like 2 dB. So they were minus six. We'll see them at minus eight, just so they sit a little bit behind the others. I can't get, can't get too far. Oh, you left me. I'm going to do a similar thing here with scars as well. I'm going to 
copy this over here. Just take this off like this. And just have it quieter, repeat it again, just on the sides. And we can have it repeat literally right in the middle. And we're gonna have to wait till there. We can maybe take the word out of it. And that needs to be even quieter, so we're going to take those down by another 3 dB. And I think we can maybe do a super reverb version of that as well uh, and copy it again here, and reverse it into this section on that really heavy reverb track, but without having to sort of make it its own sample this time. But let's listen to the whole passage and hear what we've got. So I really like it as an effect. It needs some mixing, the balance isn't perfect, but it, it helps keep everything moving. It gives a nice extra layer to the vocals. The one last thing I'm going to do here Can you tell me? is just have the tell me repeat again as well, which I just think it's going to sound good. Um, so we can just do that right off here. I think that is the tell me phrase. And I'm going to have that as a really like reverbed up version. Can you tell me what? And obviously it needs to go down a lot in level and um, potentially at minus 12, it can really sit back in the mix. And notice I'm not being super restrictive and like on point with the timing. I kind of like it being a little bit off because um, the music and everything still works with it. Might change my mind, but at the minute I like the way it's going. Can you tell me? All right, so for context, let's have a listen to what we've just done. What we'll do, we'll mute out all of this stuff, listen through, and then we'll bring it back in. And hopefully we're going to prefer it with all the add-ons and changes I've just made. I can't get, can't get too far. Oh, you left me. Now, I really prefer that. It adds a lot more to it. It's really subtle. We can, when we get to a mixing stage, really control it, bring everything back and get the levels right. But for the minute, like as an idea concept, bang on for me. Um, I might find I do other bits to that through the vocal as we go. I've shown you the technique, so might skip that in showing you. But yeah, I think we're going to do lots more of that to help the song really move on a lot more. Like I mentioned, I might go through the whole track and do lots of those same processes. And I don't want to show you those each time, but something I'm going to play around with here are these uh, ums that we've got that just sit under the main melody. Uh, something I want to try is kind of like thicken them up, widen them up, give a, a big feel to it. They sit quite nicely where they are. Uh, if I just loop these. Yeah, 
just kind of sat in the background. I just want to try doing some other things with them. And if they work, I can maybe use them again in other places. So like from where I duplicate this channel. And one of the first things I'm going to try is just copy this one down here, get it in exactly the same place, trim it a touch there. Uh, and I'm literally going to transpose it down an octave and see what kind of effect we get. All right, so now layered with this one. So what happens if we do the same process again? You guessed it, let's go up an octave. They work really nicely as layers. And I'm going to do that with the whole lot. It's a super simple technique that we can use right there. So these ones went up and you don't have to type plus. You can just type the value you want in when you're going up. However, when you're going down, you do need to stick the minus in that. Let's try that out. something they definitely need is uh, a bit of reverb and sitting in their own space now that we've done that with them um, especially it's really evident here on the last one so maybe we'll even push that into the reverb with a touch of automation so let's take all three just shift and click highlight the whole lot let's go to the bus and let's send them to hmm let's just do the large room like everything else and uh, that's going to be way too much but we'll get an idea Okay, that kind of works. That, that gives them their own space. They're still sat back quite nicely in the mix. Uh, yeah, I like what's going on here. What I think we might need to do is tune them up ever so slightly though. So we look at putting uh, auto-tune on them. There's a couple of ways we can approach these. Um, we can just use the auto-tune plugin itself. If we just go into our effects, into pitch and pitch correction, uh, we can just tune this to the key of the track, which was, if I remember correctly, F sharp minor. So we can just go in here. We can put it in something like the major minor pentatonic and take F sharp. That's going to make sure it holds it in pitch. Um, all you ever really need to adjust is the response. Um, I want this to respond quite quickly. So notice if we had it slower, it went through like a whole series of notes. If we bring it fast, it just goes through two. So in context, So that's just going to help it hold it in tune. The other way we could do it would be to use flex pitch. But this has worked for us in this case. Now we're just going to copy this over to the lower octave one. Now we might need to change the range on here um, over to low, but it's unlikely. It'll probably be okay for us. And definitely a little bit slower on the speed. Cool. So with all three. Now the pitched up one's just got this little bit of resonance in it, which is kind of annoying me. I'm just going to take the low end out while we're here, because we definitely don't need it or want it, probably to around the 200 marker. That's so probably going to be this here, around 1K-ish. What we're going to do, we're just going to make a spike, boost it up dramatically, uh, and just want to listen to whether it's pleasant or unpleasant. And it just starts to whistle here. And that is what we're going to dial back by about 6 dB. All in all, that's kind of all right. Uh, 
Now the other thing I'm going to do is just give them a quick rename. We we'll call it um, high and I'm low, so we know what they are. And I'm going to give it a bit of uh, panning as well. So let's just take a section here, and we're going to put the high on the left because I've got uh, an idea of putting some of the drums in the mix, like the hi hat and things, slightly off to the right. That's where I like to put them. And then the low, do you know what? I think we'll keep the low center. Maybe keep the put the original slightly off to the right. Yeah, that's just got a slightly nice spread about it now. I think what's good about that, I might be able to use those lower ones in here as well. And of course, we've got three different ones. We could, you know, we could vary them up as well. But let's see if it sits at all enjoyably here. What we could do, we could try the reverse trick as well. That could be quite pleasant for it. Now, what we'll need to do to get it to be able to reverse is we have to bounce it in place because it's currently got flex on from the pitch down uh, adjustment. So what we have to do is do the same thing before we're going to select that particular region. We can go into file and export, file and bounce and region in place. You can do command B as well. And we're going to do this low um, rev test. So we know what it is, new track, same as everything that's before. Beautiful, it gives it a new track. And now we'll be in a position where we can reverse it like so. And we want it to really transition perfectly into that next phrase there. Oops, we can just bring it back a little bit. And what that definitely needs is to be sent heavily to a larger reverb. Potentially even a delay would work nicely on it as well, but let's just for the minute send it to that large concert hall like that. And then ever so slightly down in level. Let's just take the gain down by three. I like that and I'm going to put a delay directly on the channel um, what I'm going to do is use a stereo delay I'm going to have a slight difference between the left and the right so we've got our left and the right options just here and then the two differences here what we can do is actually for example set them both to say one over four like this I then have a, a deviation as well so they are ever so slightly different between the two and we just have a really small percent but it's still within that range of the one over four they're just gonna be slightly off from each other in the low cut um, probably 300 Hertz or so don't really need any of that body in there and high cut them slightly differently and uh, give them different feedback as well and cross blend them as well depends what we need let's just play it back and hear how that works as a little transition for us that works quite nicely uh, I think it would be too much to do it um, in in every section here however but here might work quite well I think what might work really nicely is to take the middle ones here and you use them again just when the break comes in so the break comes back in here but we'll use this reverse one we just made as like a transition into that Here, I'm just going to use this first individual one here just to fill a little bit of space in. Um, starts just around there. Just 
just noticed a really tiny pop just here, and I think it's in this vocal. But I but I but I yeah, it is just the place of the first word, so it might be just this little bit here. So what we're going to do to tackle that is just highlight all three. We've got a tiny little fade in. We're just going to bring this in just so it fades in over that pop. But I can't. Cool. I hope that's given you some more creative ideas and it's definitely building out more and more of the vocal performance as we go along.